Recently, I took delivery of a set of 50 cigarette cards issued by the Wills Cigarette Company in 1926 from a seller in New Zealand that I found on eBay. The subject of the cards is winners of the Victoria Cross in World War I. Join me now as we examine some of these cigarette cards and learn a bit about the men depicted on them and find out how they earned the highest military award for bravery in the Commonwealth. The first card we will review is for one of the very youngest men ever to be awarded the Victoria Cross. John Travis Cornwall, V.C. of the Royal Navy. In October 1915, John Cornwall, commonly known as Jack Cornwall, enlisted in the Royal Navy at 15 years of age. He received training as a sight setter and gun layer and held the rank of boy seaman first class. Upon completion of training, Jack Cornwall was assigned to HMS Chester in the spring of 1916. On May 31, 1916, during the Battle of Jutland, HMS Chester was scouting ahead of the 3rd Battle Cruiser Squadron when at 5.30 p.m. Chester came under intense fire from four German cruisers. The 5.5-inch gun mounting where Cornwall was serving as a sight setter was only protected by a shield to the front that didn't extend all the way to the deck and was hit by at least four nearby hits. Shrapnel from these shells killed or severely wounded all the crew, including Jack Cornwell. Even though he was in intense pain, Jack remained on his feet at his post awaiting instructions from the bridge until the end of the Chester's engagement with the German cruisers. After the engagement, medical personnel rushed to the gun emplacement and found Jack Cornwell dying with a severe chest wound. John Cornwell was taken ashore to hospital where he died of his wounds. Upon recommendations of the Royal Navy and approved by King George V, George Cornwell was awarded posthumously the Victoria Cross. The award citation by King George V reads, The instance of devotion to duty by boy first class John Travers Cornwell, who was mortally wounded early in the action, but nevertheless remained standing alone at a most exposed post of quietly awaiting orders until the end of the action with the gun's crew dead and wounded around him. He was sixteen and a half years old. I regret that he has since died, but I recommend his case for special recognition in justice to his memory and as an acknowledgement of the high example set by him. We will now turn our attention to the next cigarette card in this series that we are going to discuss on a very brave Scotsman. Piper Daniel Laidlaw, V.C., the Piper of Luz. Daniel Laidlaw was born in 1875 in Little Swinton, Berkshire, in Scotland, and first joined the British Army on April the 11th 1896 in the Durham Light Infantry. He was posted to India where he stayed for two years until June 1898. After returning to Britain, he remustered in the King's Own Scottish Borderers as a piper until April 1912 when he was placed on reserve. Upon the outbreak of World War I, Daniel Laidlaw re-enlisted on the 1st of September 1914. From September 25th to October 8th, 1915, the Battle of Luz took place on the Western Front in France. This was the first time in the war in which the British used poison gas. On the first morning of the Battle of Luz, September 25th, 1915, at 6.30 a.m., Daniel Laidlaw at the age of 40, earned his Victoria Cross. 
His battalion was stalled in the trenches under heavy artillery fire from the German guns with poison gas wafting back from the British cylinders fired on the German trenches. The officer in command, Lieutenant Young, cried out, For God's sake, Slaidlaw, pipe them together. We will now turn to Laidlaw's own words. On Saturday morning, we got orders to raid the German trenches. At 6.30, the bugle sounded. The advance and I got over the parapet with Lieutenant Young. I at once got the pipes going and the laddies gave a cheer as they started it off for the enemy lines. As soon as they showed themselves over the trench tops, they began to fall fast, but they never wavered but dashed straight on as I played the old air they all knew, blue bonnets over the border. I ran forward with them, piping for all I knew, and just as we were getting near the German lines, I was wounded by shrapnel in the left ankle and leg. I was too excited to feel pain just then, but scrambled along as best I could. I changed my tune to the standards of Bray or Mar. I grand tuned for charging on. I kept on piping and piping and hobbling after the laddies until I could go no further. Then seeing that the boys had won, then began to get back as best I could to our own trenches. For his acts of bravery on this day, Daniel Laidlaw was awarded the Victoria Cross by King George V. Daniel Laidlaw survived the war and lived until 1950. But that's enough of me telling the story. Let's hear the man himself. It gives me a thrill to find you have brought the famous pipes of Lewes with you, Laidlaw. Never go anywhere without them, sir. With men falling all around us in the trenches at Lewes on the 25th of September 1915, when Lieutenant Young yelled out to me, Laidlaw, for God's sake, do something with your pipes. I played them over the top and went right on through the first line of German trenches on to the second line where I was bowled over. Will you play as the tune with which you piped the boys over the top? Yes, sir. Now that we've learned a bit about Daniel Laidlaw, V.C., the Piper of Luz, we will turn our attention to the next cigarette card in this series, for drummer William Kenny, V.C. William Kenny was born on the 24th of August, 1880, in Donegal, County Loth, in Ireland. He was a drummer and a career soldier in the 2nd Battalion, Gordon Highlanders, and had served in the Second Boer War and in World War I with the Gordon Highlanders in Egypt before transferring to Ypres. As a drummer, Kenny's job in action would have been as a runner, taking messages between different parts of the battalion. On October 23, 1914, William Kenny earned his Victoria Cross. The medal citation reads, for conspicuous bravery on the 23rd of October near Ypres in rescuing wounded men on five occasions under heavy fire in the most fearless manner and for twice previously saving machine guns by carrying them out of action. On numerous occasions, drummer Kenny conveyed urgent messages under very dangerous circumstances over fire-swept ground. Drummer Kenny received his Victoria Cross from King George V on May 18, 1915. He achieved the rank of drum major and was discharged from the army in 1919 and lived and worked in London until his death in 1936. We will now turn our attention to a Victoria Cross winner from Canada.
Captain Edward Bellew. Edward Bellew was born on the 28th of October, 1882 in Bombay, now Mumbai, India, and was educated back in Britain at the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, before serving with the British Army. In 1903, he emigrated to Canada, where he settled in British Columbia in the town of Kamloops and worked as an engineer for the Department of Public Works. At the outbreak of World War I, Edward joined the Canadian Army and served with the 1st British Columbia, 7th Battalion, CEF. Lieutenant Bellew received the Victoria Cross for his actions on the 24th of April, 1915, near Curacao in Belgium, during the Second Battle of Ypres, following the first successful use of poison gas by the German Army. While manning a machine gun position overlooking the Germans, Lieutenant Bellew, along with Sergeant Hugh Peerless, became isolated from the rest of the battalion and were nearly surrounded by German troops. All attempts for reinforcements to reach their position were repelled. Sergeant Peerless was killed and Lieutenant Bellew was wounded, but Lieutenant Bellew maintained his fire until the ammunition failed and the enemy rushed the position. Lieutenant Bellew then seized a rifle, smashed his machine gun to prevent its use by the Germans, and fighting to the end, was taken prisoner. He remained a prisoner of war until the end of World War I. Lieutenant Bellew was promoted to captain, and for their actions, Sergeant Peerless was posthumously awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal, and Captain Bellew received the Victoria Cross. After the war, Captain Bellew returned to Kamloops, where he lived until his death in 1961. A shameful occurrence happened in the 1970s after Captain Bellew's death, when his Victoria Cross was stolen and never recovered. We have now come to the last winner of the Victoria Cross that we're going to discuss in this video. Another very brave Scotsman, Captain Harry Sherwood Rankin, B.C. Harry Rankin was born on the 3rd of September, 1883, in Irving, Ashire, Scotland. He enrolled in the University of Glasgow Medical School in the summer of 1900 and graduated with a Bachelor of Medicine degree in 1905. In 1910, he became a member of the Royal College of Physicians of London. He entered the Army in 1909 and continued his studies at the Army Medical College and was promoted to captain in 1912. On the 19th and 20th of September, 1914, at Hot-Avenes, France, Captain Rankin was severely wounded in the lake. But rather than attend to his own well-being, he bound up the wound on his leg to stop the bleeding. Then, under shrapnel and rifle fire, he then continued to dress the wounds of his men. When he finally permitted himself to be carried to the rear, his wounds were too severe, and he died on the 25th of September. For this noble act of courage, he was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross. In 1924, his parents established a University of Glasgow prize in his memory. It is still awarded annually to the candidate who obtains the highest grades in exams for medicine. I hope you found this video on some of the brave Victoria Cross winners of World War I to be of interest. If you'd like me to uh, make a future video of some other BC winners, in this set of cigarette cards, please leave a comment below. Also, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Till next time, keep safe and well.